Amen. As most of you knew, we were off this past week. We had a great time, and we just, I, um, the Lord just blessed us with, um, you can believe this, I even hate to say it, but cool weather. Yeah. <laughs> it was really nice up there, but we're back, and uh, um, we just, we're thankful for the opportunity to be gone a few days and just kind of get refreshed and restored and uh, ready to go. So uh, I appreciate uh, everybody carrying on last week, and we appreciate Brother Chris filling in with us, and uh, Forrest Riley, and uh, so just want to give a, uh, let you know we had a great time. Amen. Brother Chris, come on up here. We're thankful for him this morning. That's, yes. Again, he preaches God's Word. That's what we need. That's foundational. Amen. God's Word. So uh, let's give him a hand this morning. Amen. Amen. How are y'all doing this morning? Amen. Last, um, as y'all know, Pastor Dallas and and, and Pam, and Sister Pam went up to their daughters and got their grandkids, and so they've been they've been battling COVID this week and this last couple of weeks. So when he asked me to um, to to be there this week, the Lord immediately. And sometimes I don't always get titles like this. If you, I don't always seek titles anyway. But sometimes the titles will come, you know, but. The first thing I received was a, was a title, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, this is not the time. How I many of y'all have ever had somebody uh, talking to you or aggravating, and you just told them, this ain't the time, all right? Well, the Lord uh, spoke to me, and um, I want to talk to you out of what I really believe is the Lord's heart today, and um, we'll try to get through this, but this is not the time. A few things I want to bring out this morning. This is not the time to lose hope. That's right. Amen. It's, it's an easy time to lose hope, but it's not the time to lose it. This is not the time to become isolated. That's right. This is not the time to grow careless. Yes. Amen. And that's easy to do during yes. times like yes. this. This is not the time to draw back from God. Amen. And I'm going to be looking this morning in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. And y'all like me this morning because I'll keep us there. How about that? Amen. Uh, y'all wouldn't bother y'all, would you? Especially since we got a screen. Amen. That'll help. But uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And I want to begin in verses. I'm going to begin in verse 19. I gave you verse 23, but then I'm going to get to that. That's going to be my opening text. But I want to back up just a little bit and lay a little context. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 Having therefore brethren Boldness to enter into the holiest By the blood of Jesus By a new and living way Which he hath consecrated for us Through the veil That is to say his flesh And having a high priest over the house of God Let us Draw near with a true heart In full assurance of faith Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our hope. Somebody say hope. Amen. Amen. Without wavering. For he is faithful who promised. God bless you as you're seated this morning. And if y'all will pray with me. That the Lord would anoint me. And that I would say what he wants to say to us this morning. That we can hear it. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you one more time in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the touch from heaven, Lord, that was on our worship team, that's on uh, the people in this house of God this morning. I'm asking you to help me, Lord. A little unorthodox today, God, but I'm asking you to speak through me, Lord. Help us, God, to hear what God is saying today in this moment, Lord. Give us ears to hear what your spirit says. Lord, open us up, empower us, Lord, to speak and hear the word of God. And Lord, I'm asking you today to be glorified in this place, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Well, today I don't have to remind you there is a, another wave of the COVID pandemic, the Delta variant, and now I believe the Delta Plus variant. And it's just, you hear these things, you know, and the first thing you do and Many times it's turned the news on some mornings and it's just, it's just there. It's like it's just, it's there. Um, you know, my wife's pregnant and so obviously there's the, 
the you know the natural tendency to, to worry about that and just people we know. I was counseling with a, a mother of three this uh, last uh, about a week or two ago, and uh, just really grieving. She lost her youngest child to a horrific accident at home when he was about three, two, three months old. And she's finally now just having the opportunity to grieve that. It's been almost three years. In fact, Hurricane Michael hit us. And then right after Hurricane Michael, that happened. And so just that, that particular time frame and all that. And so she, she is working um, full time, trying to raise three kids. And just now, uh, just now called and said she now has all the symptoms of COVID and can't work. Yes, you know, so we got these situations are going on. And this last week was just really a hard week for her. Um, as I was talking to her last time I spoke to her, it was just, you know, trying to believe God, struggling with grief and all this kind of stuff. But now all of a sudden, boom, here's this. You know, so what is hope? That's what I want to look at for just a moment. And where is our hope rooted in? It's not rooted in how things are going at the moment. That's right. How many of y'all know circumstances can drain hope like nothing else? Yeah. Amen. You know, the, the Dow Jones will go up and down, up and down. The, the numbers of COVID will go up and down. And really, what do we know? You can't really hope in a, in a brighter future for even America. Our hope is not rooted in um, a political party taking power. I think we've, we've, we've all lived long enough to know that politics isn't the answer to the world's problems. What is our hope rooted in? Our hope is rooted in the fact that we have a mediator yes. who is sitting at the right hand of the Father yes. interceding for us. Amen. One who not only intercedes for us, but who shed his blood for us and offered that as a perfect sacrifice so that you and I can be reconciled to God. Aren't you glad Jesus is your mediator this yes. morning? Amen. That's what our hope is rooted in because remember what the writer of Hebrews said, having boldness to enter the holiest of all. Fear. Now, fear is to faith what despair is to hope. Amen. They're just absolutely antonyms. But fear first enters the human race in the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve sinned. You remember they had fled from the presence of God. And when the Lord said, Adam, where are you? He said, I, I hid because I was afraid. Adam was afraid because his relationship with God was not right. Mm -hmm. Fear first entered the human heart because of broken fellowship with God. So in the very heart of fear, and if you will, hopelessness, and all that goes along with that, if you will, negative emotions and, and, and such, it is at the heart of it is that man was not right with God. And so this morning, if you've been made right with God, what is your hope in? What is your faith in? It's not in that this world is getting any better because you just need to keep reading this book and you're going to find out this world is not getting better. That's right. That's right. It's not going to get better until Jesus steps out of heaven on a white horse yes. and establishes the messianic kingdom, the yes. millennium. Yeah. Okay, but until that point, we're going to begin to see. Now, does that mean that things aren't going to look better at times? Yeah, the enemy would love for things to look better so God's people would be deceived by good looks. Mm -hmm. But our hope is in the fact that our lives have been reconciled. Our souls have been reconciled to our Creator. That's what all of this goes on. And so he says, let us hold fast the profession of our hope. The profession of our hope is that we can draw near to God in full assurance of faith because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what true hope is rooted in this morning. That's what true hope is rooted in in any age and in any time. It is the enemy's desire to use sickness, situations, to tempt God's people to lose hope and to get careless and draw back. And that's what the writer of Hebrews was desperately trying to get the people of the Lord to understand. Faith and drawing near to God are inseparable. Now, I'm going to get to these next few thoughts this morning, but 
The psalmist said, those that hide under the shadow of the Almighty will be safe. Isaiah says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. All right, here's what, the, here's what the enemy wants the people of God to do. He wants the people of God not to abide under the shadow of the That's Almighty. Right. That's right. Not to wait on the Lord. Amen. Right? Because he wants the people of God weak and overcome by fear. Overcome by hopelessness. But how many of you know hope is one of the most powerful forces in the universe? Yes. I was reading an article from the American Psychology Association this morning, actually. Um, and it said that this, this particular um, psych, psychologist, psychiatrist, he said that the, if we could just bottle up hope and prescribe that to people, that would cure most of the fears and anxieties in the world. Amen. Yeah. You know, um, that, and that's the truth. How many of you think back to situations, and, and some of the situations for me were before I knew the Lord. I wouldn't want to go back to being lost, would you? That's right. Who would choose that life? But I can remember a couple days in particular that I made the comment that I do not see how I'm going to survive this day. There were some things that happened, and I'm just telling you, those were some stressful days. And thank God for His grace in those moments, because I didn't have grace and I didn't have hope. But the Lord, you see, that's what gets us through is hope. You know, somebody said, uh, you know, that again, as that daughter said, but so this is not a time to lose hope. It's not a time to lose true hope in what we have. This is not a time to become isolated. Anybody heard the term social distancing lately? Uh, I'm not telling you not to and you be wise, but there is power and fellowship. Yes, there is. And one thing I've seen this year, this last year and last year and two is some people became isolated. How many know when the doors reopened, some people didn't come back? That's right. That's right. There's people today convinced that all they need to do is sit home and watch services on TV. And I, and I praise God for live stream and every tool that can get the gospel to people because there's some people that can't leave home. That's right. And if you're sick, you don't need to leave home. That's right. Okay, so please, uh, please hear me this morning. I'm not talking about being wise and, and doing what makes sense, okay? Medically and everything else. But what I am saying is the enemy wants us to get isolated. Whether it's this church, you know, there's power in unity. Yes, there is. The anointing can't flow down unless there's a place for him to flow down. So anytime the enemy can cause a fracture, or a breach in the in the in the people of God, He knows that the anointing is going to have a harder time flowing down. All right, but one thing we find is is the greatest source of conflict that and one of the greatest tools the enemy uses for the people of God is isolation. That's right. Yeah. That's as right. Jesus described him as a wolf, that's a that's a classic hunting tactic of any predator is they will look for the weakest animal. And they'll find ways to isolate that animal or find that animal isolated so that they can come in and destroy that life. That's exactly what the enemy wants to do to us spiritually. Amen. And he'll use a pandemic to isolate you. Yes. Amen. And I was thinking this morning, you know, just there's... So when you hear, when we hear these prayer requests, you know, it's real easy to just glance over, you know, just gloss over that. Those are people that need stuff. There's some of you that know these people personally. And, and there's something you, maybe you can call them. How, how, how does one get out there and not get isolated? Just get involved in, in people's situations. Be here as much as possible. Verse 24, though, says, let us consider one another. What does that mean? Let us think about each other. In times of, of, of trial and stress and trauma, it gets very easy for one to become very self-focused. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's what the writer of Hebrews is trying to get the people of God to understand. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Mm -hmm. All right, and going on, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is. You know, some people don't see the importance of coming together. You look, one of the big issues in the in the correction system. Y'all heard of solitary confinement. 
Uh, and I'm not saying that these people are angels or anything, okay? And I'm not arguing for, you know, Jude you know, that's not what I'm talking about. But what I am saying is you can just look at the negative effects that solitary confinement has on people psychologically, emotionally. It's, it really. And so if you would think about that, the enemy would like to put you in a spiritual and emotional solitary confinement mm -hmm. as believers. You see, we're a body and we are, guys, we're in a very individualistic society, aren't we? We're in a society that everything's about me, what I want, when I want it. And that's just, you and I fight that as believers. You and I are now being told that you need to stay home. And a lot of mainstream media, is they're, they're promoting staying home, not going to school, not, you know, all this kind of stuff. I can tell you as a teacher, um, and as a, a preacher and a teacher that online just doesn't uh, it just doesn't take the place of in person All right, you can look at my scores this year and you can find that those that were in my classroom benefited the most educationally and I'll guarantee you as much as you can be here you're going to benefit from the fellowship of others yes you are, amen but not forsaking the assembling of yourselves as you see the day approaching which day is he talking about? the day of the Lord are we getting close to the day of the Lord? Yes. Is Hebrews outdated? Did the Lord not know that the COVID pandemic was going to happen? Are we now not supposed to assemble as we see the day approaching because the, the media tells us not to? What does that mean? No, I'm not talking about being foolish and being all up in everybody's face. That's not what I'm telling you. But what I am telling you is as we see the day approaching, you better rest assured that any way the enemy can keep God's people from coming together, that's what he wants to do. And any way he can accomplish that, he will. Be it through legislation, be it through science, fear, whatever. The enemy's trying to keep the people of God isolated and the enemy knows that if you're isolated and I can't tell you what to think or I can't tell you what God wants you to know, the enemy certainly knows this and you can't communicate with one another the enemy knows he can communicate with you. And the devil's a master at getting people by themselves and telling them what they need to think. That's right. That's right. And so the more that you and I can come together in fellowship, the more you and I can um, benefit. There's some of you this morning, you came in here in a very healthy, powerful season of your Christian walk, and you're doing really well this morning. You're, you're just in a good place. But there's some people in this place that may not have walked into this sanctuary in that same condition. Right. They need you to help build them up. They need you to help pull them up, maybe from a place that you've seen God pull you out of. Right. And if we're always isolated and never around each other, who's going to pull each other up? Who's going to edify each other? Right. Who's going to build the body of Christ up if the body of Christ is isolated? You know, this is just, it's just reality, but I believe this is the heart of God for today. Not forsaking. Am I saying we've got to meet every day for three hours a day? Absolutely not. But the principle of the matter is that you assemble together. Yeah. Amen. The principle. How often you do that, I don't know. But the principle is that you assemble. Amen. This is not a time to lose hope. Our hope is eternal. Yeah. When you look at the high priest of Israel, those high priests, they died. And there had to be another priest take over, and then one day that priest was going to die, and another one had to take over. Well, Jesus is a high priest. He's a mediator between God and man. He is made right between God and man. What man made wrong, Jesus has come in and redeemed and restored. And thank God... Jesus is not getting older and Jesus is not dying and we never need to wait on a new priest because this one's eternal. That's right. This one lives and operates by the power of an everlasting life. Amen. So that means that if our hope is in the high priest who's made right and who's mediating between us and God and our hope rests in that peace and if he's an eternal priest, guess what kind of hope we have? An eternal hope. Yeah. A hope that you never it doesn't have an expiration date. This is the reason you and I can enter the presence of the Lord. 
Our hope is not just in the fact that we have a mediator. Our hope is in the fact that through that mediator, you and I can come into the holy place. And we can receive help and grace to help us in our time of need. And the next thing, next thought. You know, number one, this is not a time to lose hope. You, you never have to lose hope in a priest that's eternal. And who's done a work that's eternal. This is not a time to become isolated. This is not a time to isolate yourself. This is not a time to grow careless. And the writer of Hebrews goes on in this same, same passage and context. And he says, for if we sin willfully after we have the knowledge of the truth, there remains no sacrifice for sin. There's people today, y'all, that are growing careless. They're growing careless with the things of God and the grace of God. But the writer of Hebrews wanted those people to know, as God wants you to know, that there is a difference. Now, we know sin is sin. All, all violation of God's holy standards is sin. Missing that mark of perfection and holiness. But there is a sin that is absolutely um, willful. All right? there is, And that's a matter of the heart, by the way. We're all going to make mistakes. There's times in our lives when I'm not going to get it right. You're not going to get it right. We're going to have to go to our, our mediator and say, please forgive me and please wash me. That's life. But here's the difference. If we sin willfully, that, that is carelessness. That is absolutely taking everything we've just read carelessly. People are getting careless today. But he says there's a certain fearful looking of judgment. What the writer of Hebrews is saying is that's the very thing Jesus died to take away is yes. fear of judgment. Yes. The only way you and I are free to hope and free to have faith, free of, of torment. That's the reason Adam was afraid. He was Why was he so fearful? He was fearful of God because he was fearful of God's judgment. The Lord said, you're going to die. Mm. And so what the writer of Hebrews is saying is don't become careless with your faith. Don't become careless with this hope that's set before you because all that remains is fear of judgment and judgment. Because he goes on to say, you know, that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Listen, y'all, I'm thankful for a loving God. Yes, amen. I'm thankful for a God that, that we can fall into the hands of a loving God. Yes. But folks, it is still a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yes. And so as we see this pandemic, there's a lot of things, not just this pandemic, but the time we're living in, which that kind of marks it. The enemy wants us to lose hope. He wants us to, to not even understand, I don't even know why I need to go there anymore. You know, why do I need to go to? Why do I need to assemble myself? Lose hope. Become isolated so that he can cause us to grow careless. That's, it. That's his goal. His goal is not just that you snap out of it in a few months or a year. His goal is that for all of eternity, your soul is, is condemned. That's his goal. But this is not a time to lose hope, become isolated, or grow careless. Because if we lose hope, grow isolated, we're going to become careless. Now, but the last thing I want to leave us with this morning is that this is not a time to draw back. This is human nature, though. Mm -hmm. The one thing, we need God's nature. Mm -hmm. That's right. We need new nature. That's what born-again nature. The enemy wants to operate through your old nature. And it's just human nature to go back, it? to revert. Yeah. That's human nature. The enemy wants you to draw back. Why? Go back to what's comfortable. Mm -hmm. The Lord's calling some of y'all to take a step in a very unfamiliar and uncomfortable direction. And the enemy wants you to draw back. Listen to what verses 34 through 39 says. <clears throat> Paul, or let me look at verse 35. Cast not therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he shall come and will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. Faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
But what does the writer of Hebrews, he encourages the people as I encourage the people here, but we are not of them who draw back. We're not of them who draw back unto perdition, destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Yeah. Amen. So no matter what we go through, we don't draw back, but we believe. We believe in the high priest who mediates between God and man. We believe in the blood that it was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. We, we believe in the body that was broken so that you and I might be able to enter in through that broken body into the presence of the Lord. This is the hope. And so no matter in what circumstance, it is not time for the church to fall apart, but it is time for the church to rise up by falling down on their knees in prayer. Yes. This is not a time to break down, but this is a time to break through. Amen. I believe that's what God wants you to hear this morning. And maybe as plain and simple as it's been, this is not a time to break down. This, listen, we have seen this summer in Vernon, not just this summer, but I would say especially for me, as I've been around a little bit more, I've seen God doing amazing things. Y'all know we've had people saved this summer, mm -hmm. delivered this summer, mm -hmm. uh, filled with the Holy Spirit this summer. Mm -hmm. We've had people absolutely changed by the power of God this summer. And not just this summer. But here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to bring in all of this fear and all of this hopelessness. So that the people of God will just go back. Listen, this isn't the first time we've been through something like this. That's right, that's right. Don't forget that after all of what... I remember last year, listen, if you're a minister, it, it gets tough to see empty pews. It gets tough to see sanctuaries where there's not a lot of people in there. But then when you begin to see the, the absolute fruit of your life, that's what the writer of Hebrews told him. He said, listen, don't cast away your confidence because that has great recompense of reward. Don't lose your hope. Understand, y'all, that if things get a little bit unstable, know this, number one, our hope is not in what this world looks like. Right. Our hope is in the fact that Jesus shed his blood for our yes. forgiveness. Yes. His body was broken so that we could enter into the presence of God. Yes. When he said it's finished on the cross, that veil that could not be torn apart or could not be over, overtaken, it was thick. It was absolutely, it made it impossible for anyone to enter the presence of God but a high priest once a year. Mm -hmm. When the body of Jesus was broken, that veil was torn from top to bottom granting you and I entrance in yeah. to the presence of the Lord. That's our hope. So I want to ask you, do you have to be in Grace Vernon to enter the presence of God? No. I entered it in my prayer room this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. The, there may be things that happen in this country, legislation that's passed, things that are recommended or enforced one day, but that does not mean the church has to become isolated. I pray we never have to shut these doors. But if we have to shut these doors, I know there's somewhere else we can go. Amen. Amen. And I know one thing, that if I have to be isolated from most people, I don't have to be isolated from all people. Right. And I do never have to be isolated from the living God. Yes. Amen. So I want to encourage y'all this morning. Don't lose hope. Don't become isolated. Do not grow careless. And don't draw back. Because I believe like the writer of Hebrews said, I'm talking to a group of people that's not that type of people. I believe I'm talking to a group of people that are those that press in. Yes. And so I want to encourage you in this time of uncertainty. Don't break down. Break through. Amen. 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 Brother Amen. Chris. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Amen. 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 Church is going to shine through this. Amen. Our light's going to shine through this. So I have that confidence this morning. We're going to keep pressing on. We know where we're headed. We know who's with us. We got the strength. We got the Holy Spirit. We got God's word to guide. God's word to guide us. And we got each other to encourage it. Uh, encourage one another to go forward. Going forward this morning. Amen. Amen. Before we dismiss, what I'd like for us to do is uh, we want to pray for our 
each one that's involved in school this this week will be giving out some uh, just some care packages. Let them realize, uh, let them know that we're uh, praying for them. Realize the job that they have, the responsibility that's there. I've uh, been entrusted with our children, so we want to. It, it involves administration, it involves the teachers, it involves the students themselves, and then also our bus drivers and our uh, ladies that. Um, help feed our children and uh, provide for our children. So every, every employee, those that clean up, that's, that's as necessary as the rest of it. So all employees of the, of the school system uh, here in Vernon that we're going to give a care package to, again, to help them know that we're supporting it and uh, let them know that we are, as a church, a, a, a body, a praying for each one that's involved, students and all. So uh, if you would, just please stand with us. And uh, we want to close things out. Um, well, the, before we close things out, we want to say a special prayer for, for our children, our administration, those that are involved in any uh, any manner with our school system, including our home, our home children. We have children that are uh, taught at home. That's part of it. So we want to encourage our, our parents and our children that are involved with that also. Let's say a blessing over our, over their school and our children this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, uh, that you care for us this morning. We thank you that you are in charge, that you're all-powerful, all-knowing. And, God, that whatever we commit to you, we know that you're able to keep this morning. And, God, uh, you see our hearts this morning, God. You see those that, uh, uh, Lord, you see our, uh, you see those that are going to be entered into a new school year, God. Each one, our home school, God, our teachers, our administrators, our leaders, God. We pray for those that help uh, care for our children, our bus drivers, those that feed our children, those that uh, clean our facilities. Lord, we pray for a blessing this morning. We pray, God, that your hand will be evident in this in our school system, God. We pray that, Lord, uh, during this time of uncertainty, during this time that's, again, even unprecedented to a great degree, God, we want your presence, God. We invite you, uh, your presence in our school. We, we pray for your blessings on uh, each and every one that's involved, Lord. We pray for your hand on them this morning morning, God. Uh, Lord, we pray that you use these care packets. Lord, we pray that God uh, help encourage those that are helping this morning, those that are teaching, those that are giving uh, guidance. Lord, we pray that you'll help them know that, God, uh, there is a church that cares about them, God, that there is a high power that we can lean on. And, God, we know that you're going to give us the strength, you're going to give us the power. Uh, God, you're going to give us the guidance to press through. And, God, uh, do those things that are, are, are needful, God. We pray for your blessings today, God. We pray for your very presence, oh God. We pray for protection of not only the staff or our children this continuing year, God. Lord, we, we know the adversary would love uh, to disrupt uh, our children and disrupt our school systems. And God, we pray for your protection, God. We pray for a hedge around our school, God. We pray for clarity of mind in the minds of our administrators, God. We pray that, Lord, there is, we know you are the, our guidance. You are our higher power. And God, we pray that we'll lean on you, that God, in every way, we'll acknowledge you, God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We pray for your blessings, God. We know we're we're empty without you, God. We're bankrupt without you. And God, we recognize, uh, Lord, what we need from you this morning. God, you said ask and we're asking. You said seek, Lord, we're seeking. You said not, God, and we're praying that, Lord, uh, that, God, that your hand is evident in our school systems and those that are involved in our children, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. We know our source, our help comes from you, God. Our hope comes from you this morning. We praise you, God. We praise you this morning. We praise you this morning. We praise you this morning. God, you are good, Lord. And we give you glory. We give you thanks this morning. We praise you, oh God. We praise you for your presence even now, God. Lord, you're in the house this morning. We're thankful for that, God. Lord, we're humbled by it this morning, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, oh God. We praise you, oh God. Worthy is your great name. Worthy is your great name. Worthy is your great name. We praise you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. We praise you, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. You might be here this morning and you have a need. You might have a need that you just like to know the body, the, the church body, the family, the um, family of God's praying for. Let us know by lifting up your hand this morning. Amen. 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 Uh, let's go to the prayer for these hands that went up, these hearts that um, they have a need. They've, they've expressed that this morning. Lord, you see these hands, God. You see the hands that went up. You see the needs that they represent this morning, God. 
Lord, you see the hearts that are heavy, God, over a, a wayward loved one, God. We pray for, Lord, to bring those children in, God. We pray, God, for those that, uh, Lord, have a financial issue this morning, God. You are our providence. You are our provider this morning, God. And we pray that, Lord, that you'll, uh, Lord, that you'll provide whatever it might be, God. You see those that are emotionally drained this morning, God. Lord, it's just hard to get up and go, Lord. We pray uh, that dark cloud of depression that dark cloud of despair be broken up to God. Let your light shine. Most of all, let your presence break through that this morning, God. We pray that you'll uplift, encourage, God. You see those that are dealing with a body that's a God an ailment. And Lord, we pray for your healing touch. You are the physician, God. Lord, your power is not limited this morning, God. We pray for healing, God. We pray for grace, God, this morning. Lord, you said your grace is sufficient. And God, we're standing on that promise this morning, God. We have confidence in your hand this morning. And God, we pray for those bodies here this morning, God. Lord, you see those that are seeking direction, God. They have, they need direction on their job. They need direction, God, in their family, God. They need direction for the next step. And God, according to your word, you are a light to our path, oh God. Lord, your very nature is light. Your very nature is knowledge. Your, the gift of wisdom comes from you this morning. And God, we're praying for that wisdom this morning. We're praying for that knowledge. We're praying for that assurance this morning, God, that you'll guide these families. And God, uh, Lord, the, our places of business is our places of employment, God, that you give the guidance that needed this morning, God. Lord, you see those that are, are, are home this morning. They're unable to assemble. They're able, unable to be in the house of the Lord as they desire. But God, we pray for again a touch for them, God. Uh, Lord, we pray that again, Lord, they, they uh, we pray that God, that they'll know your very presence this morning, God, right where they're at. But God, we pray that you refresh them this morning, God. Lord, we pray to minister and reach down this morning, God. We praise you, oh God, for again, you are our hope and you are our help this morning, God. We pray for refreshment over our people this morning, God. We pray that you give us that peace to walk in confidence, and God, that you're in charge during uh, uncertain times, God. We pray that you just help us to be that salt and light that you've commanded us to be, God. Lord, this word that you've spoken through your servant this morning, God, help us to live it this morning. Help us to grab a hold of it this morning, God. Help us not to turn back. This is not the time, but God, we know that your coming is close, and God, we're pressing forward, God. We want to see your face, God. We want to let your glory shine through our lives and each and every day, God. Lord, help us to take this work and word and put it into action, God, as we live our life, God, day by day. We praise you, God. We praise you, oh God. We praise you, oh God. Amen. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. 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 God bless you this morning. We love you guys. If you can stay.